Good morning, everyone. Miss Terry here. I'm really excited today to read some stories about birds. I don't know about you, but I love birds. I just find birds so cheerful. When you get up in the morning and you go outside and I'm on my way to work, I'm getting ready to get in my car, I love, love listening for birds. Do you guys like to listen for birds? You do? Awesome. Did you know there's so many different kinds of birds? It's amazing. Look at this. Look at this. Birds. Let's take a peek at all the, some, I mean, this is just, just a beginning of all the different kinds of birds. There's more birds than this out there. But this, just to give us an idea of some of the different kinds of birds. Have you ever seen a ruby? This is a ruby-throated hummingbird. I love to see the hummingbirds in the summertime. What about a wood duck? You guys ever seen a wood duck? Look at his beautiful green head. Isn't that beautiful? Wood duck. Let's take a look. Let's just randomly pick one. Let's see what we find. How about a black capped chickadee? We have a lot of chickadees in Maine. I bet a lot of you kids have seen a chickadee. Probably got up pretty close, too. It's a lot of fun to listen to for chickadees. So what do you think? Should we read some stories about birds? Is that a good idea? I think so. So many to pick from. As you can see behind me, I've pulled a few books about birds. We have bird books for toddlers, for you littles out there that are just you love books, you're not quite reading yet, you're, maybe your big brothers or sisters are reading to you, your mom or dad, or your grandparents. And then we have early reader books. For those of you that are starting to read, we have books about birds. And then we have birds that go all the way up. Adults like to read about birds. So we have lots and lots of bird books. So I put a display at the library. So if you come in after the story time today and you're like, you know, I'd like to learn more about birds, we have Again, a wide range of books about birds. We have books that are kind of funny. We have books that are educational, informational, that will teach you about birds and their habitat and about the life of birds. So this is just my recommendation, do whatever you like. But sometimes it's kind of fun to mix. Like I like to read a book that's sort of maybe fun about birds. And then it's, sometimes it's kind of fun to read a book that really tells you about birds so that then when you're outside and you see a bird, you might go, oh, oh, that mom bird, she's probably flying off to get a worm to feed her baby. And there's a nest up there. And in the spring, there's going to be eggs. It, it's just cool to learn. Okay? What do you think? So Let's get started. The first story I'm going to share to you is one of my new favorites. This book is fairly new, came out last year. And it's called Mel Fell. It's by Corey Tabor. And if you look at this book, it's kind of interesting because, you know, books go, here's the spine. But did you notice that? How the words, I have to kind of turn the book like this. Do you see what I'm saying? It's different, and I like that. Let's get started. Mel Fell. Something else about Mel Fell. Is that a rhyme? Mel Fell? Those rhyming words? Yes, they are. So again, I've got to turn my book this way. One day, when Mama was away, Mel decided it was time to learn to fly. She had been in the nest long enough. Aren't you scared? asked her sister Pim. Yes, said Mel, but I won't let that stop me. She looked down. Sure was a long drop, said her brother. Well, I've got wings. Mel was scared, and it was a long drop. But today was the day she would fly. See you soon, she said to her siblings, and she jumped and she flipped and she spread her wings and then, look at her go, and then she fell. And 
Mel fell and fell. Well, the squirrels tried to catch her. They really did. They'd grown quite fond of those squeaky little chirpers upstairs. Blast! Nuts! Oof! Hey! But it was no use. They missed her by a whisker. Trying to catch her. said the bees. But they barely slowed her down. See the little bees trying to help her? Helpful little bees. We will save you. Do you think the bees can do it? Nope. Even the spider lent a hand. In fact, eight of them. Do you see the spider trying to help her? Oh my goodness. And then this little fly, he says, I'm free because he was caught in the spider web, and when Mel came down, he was able to escape. He was happy that Mel fell, but still Mel fell. Do not fear, helpless little bird. I will catch you, said the slug. Hmm, tried, didn't work. She fell and fell. And look, even the little ants are trying. Look at the ants. They're trying to reach her. It's not looking good. She's heading straight down. Oh no, said the little beetle. The little ladybug, I mean. Oh no, right near. If we look for clues, it looks like we're getting low. I think there's water. Hang in there, kids. Splash! Look at the big splash. Looks like Mel has splashed into the water. Mel dived into the water. I've got to turn the book. And she snapped her beak and she caught a fat little fish. And she kicked her legs and she wiggled her tail feathers and she spread her wings and then she going to do? What is Mel going to do? What is she going to do? Mel flew. Look at her. She flew. And what's in her mouth? A little fish. Does the fish look happy? Not too happy. Well, Mel, she flew and she flew. Look at all the little ants, they're following her up, and the slugs watching her. And as Mel flew by the spider, the spider clapped her hands, all eight of them. Clap, 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 clap. And the bees said, because the bees are happy. Look how happy the bees are. I guess the only one that's not happy is the, the fish. And the squirrels race to the top. Look at that, Mel's still flying. Mama was waiting when she got there and she said, I flew, I flew. She's so proud. So she opened her mouth to say, I flew, I flew. And what happened, kids? What's missing? She opened her mouth and said, I flew, I flew. And? Who's that? The little fish. And the little fish said, I'm flying, I'm flying. Bet he's happy now. I knew you could, said Mama. I knew I could too, said Mel. Do not fear, little helpless little fish. I will catch you. Splash. And so the fish ended up okay too. The fish went back into the water. So kids, the thing I want to share with you about this story is that Mel is a bird called a kingfisher. And kingfisher catch fish by diving into the water from tree branches or wires. Many kingfishers nest in tunnels. They dig in earthen banks near water while others in tree hollows. See, just like Mel in a tree hollow. Some even live in old termite nests. 
a young kingfisher probably doesn't catch a fish the first time they leave the nest. But then Mel is a very special bird. The end. Excellent. Thanks for listening to my story. If it's okay, I wanted to point out a couple books. Now this, remember I mentioned nonfiction books that have lots of information? So this book here is called How Do Birds Find Their Ways by Roma Gans, illustrated by Paul Marocha. So this book here, if you were to check this book out, you could find out all kinds of things about different kinds of birds, which is pretty cool. It's an excellent, excellent book telling you about how birds use the Earth's magnetic field to guide them. Anybody know that? And did you know that birds can still find their way when it's cloudy? And they can fly when they can't see the sun? How do they know which way to go? How do they know? I just told you guys, you, you'll know now. Because they use the Earth's magnetic field. Get this book. Learn about birds. All right. So before we end today's little reading, I wanted to show you a couple of things. When you come into the library, we have a craft for everybody to make your own birdhouse. I haven't got mine finished yet. I'm just starting it. You are going to need your parents probably to help you out a little bit, guys. So mine is in the works. In your packet, there are directions on how to put your birdhouse together. I'm going to paint mine. I've got my paintbrush ready. And I picked out some paint. So that's my next step. So I'm going to paint my paint house. I mean, paint my paint house. Paint my birdhouse. And you'll see there's little holes in the top. So you can put string through it and then you can hang it outside. All right. So. A little birdhouse you can come in and pick up. I know some of you kids have already been in and picked one up, but if you haven't, come on in. Another thing I wanted to tell you about. I'm going to be reading a story about owl babies. And I have a fun little challenge for you. When you come into the library, I have some owl cutouts that I'm going to hide all around the library. Let's count and see how many there are. And when you come in, I wonder if you can find them all. They're going to be all over the place. So you're going to have to eye spy throughout the whole library, well, upstairs, the children's room, to try to find them. So let's count and see how many you'll be looking for. Okay? One. Help me out. Two. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there'll be ten owls hiding in the library. Do you think you can find them all? If you find them all, you get an extra special craft to take home with you. But you gotta find all ten. So that's a challenge. And the littles, if you need help from your older brothers or sisters or your parents, that's okay. Let's see if you can find all ten. All right. One more story. This one's called Owl Babies by Martin Waddle Patrick Benson. Once there were three baby owls. They lived in a hole in the trunk of a tree with their mother owl. The hole had twigs and leaves and owl feathers. It was their home. One night they woke up and their owl mother was gone. Where's mommy? asked Sarah. Oh my goodness, said Percy. I want my mommy, said Bill. Baby owl thought. All owls think a lot. I think she's gone hunting, said Sarah. To get us food, said Percy. I want my mummy, said Bill. 
but their owl mommy didn't come. The baby owls came out of their house and they sat on the tree and they waited. A big branch for Sarah, a small branch for Percy, and an old piece of ivy for Bill. She'll be back, said Sarah. Back soon, said Percy. I want my mummy, said Bill. It was dark in the woods, and they had to be brave, for things moved all around them. She'll bring us mice and, and things that are nice, said Sarah. I suppose so, said Percy. I want my mummy, said Bill. They sat and they thought, remember all owls think a lot? Well, I think we should all sit on my branch, said Sarah. And they did, all three together. Suppose she got lost, said Sarah. Or a fox got her, said Percy. I want my mummy, said Bill. And the baby owls closed their owl eyes and then wished their owl mummy would come. And she came. Soft and silent, she swooped through the trees to Sarah and Percy and Bill. Mommy, they cried and they flapped and they danced and they bounced up and down on their branch. What's all the fuss? The owl mother asked. You know I'd come back. The baby owls thought. Remember, all owls think a lot. I knew it, said Sarah. And I knew it, said Percy. And what do you think Bill said? Bill said, I love my mommy. The end. Great, great owl story. Again, remember I mentioned that there's picture books that are interesting and full of information and fun, but if you want to dig a little deeper and find out maybe about owl's habitat, look deeper. We've got a snowy owl story written by Melissa Kim, and Melissa Kim even lives, in, I think, in Maine. Illustrated by Jada Fitch. And this book will tell you even more about owls. All right. So thank you so much for coming in today. Again, we've got an owl craft. Excuse me, not an owl craft. We have a birdhouse craft. The owl craft shh, might be one of the crafts that you get if you find the owls. So come on in, guys. All right. Take care till the next time and have a great day and keep your eyes open for birds. All right. Want to hear all about it. Bye-bye.